Hello and welcome to First Lady with Meghna Pant, an exclusive show on First Post where we bring you India's foremost leaders, thinkers and activists. There are very few people in the world who have found name, fame and acclaim without legacy, without clout or without a godfather to their name. Nimrat Kaur is one such person and she's found fame not just in our country but also worldwide. The power of authenticity, the power of talent or destiny's child. I asked Nimrat these questions and also speak to her about what it's like to be an Indian actor in Hollywood today. Nimrat, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you. I almost feel like making you repeat that. <laughs> thank yeah. you. But we're very proud of you, know. I mean, congratulations on all your success. You're doing us so proud. You're doing the nation so proud. And you're breaking shackles, I think, even for Indian women everywhere. So we're very, very proud of you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Dimit, let me ask you, uh, you know, how you're savoring this success. I know it's come after a very long struggle. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a question I often find very difficult to answer, you know, Meghna, because I think the definition and the handling of success is very tricky, you know. Yeah. Um, I feel like it changes um, day by day. You know, yeah. I feel like what I thought was success uh, maybe two years ago isn't success to me today. You know, success, the definition of success keeps changing. Yeah. And I'm by nature not the kind of person to, um, you know, just rejoice in what's happening beyond a point because I just get bored of it. Yeah. Then I'm, you know, I'm looking for the next thing. I'm, yeah. It really lasts as long as the day lasts or as long as that moment lasts. And uh, it's great to uh, celebrate with your family or, you know, just to see how people around you, your loved ones are happy with you and for you. Yeah. Um, but I think that, you know, it's it's fun to just keep out of your comfort zone and I feel like success tends to put you in a sort of a comfort zone that, okay, now I can chill yeah. because whatever <laughs> I set out for has happened. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that really genuinely happens. I feel like you constantly keep moving uh, in some direction or the other, whether up or down or whatever it is. Yeah. And um, I think as far as struggles are concerned, you know, they, they continue to go on. They the, just take a different form. They take a different form. Yeah. And they, they change direction. They take, uh, you know, their magnitude changes. Mm. But I don't think struggle quite ends for anyone at yeah. any level. Yeah. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you would be a good person to ask this question because you're kind of, you know, in the thick of it almost. But how's the perception of people from the subcontinent changing in the US? Because, you know, earlier, I don't know if you remember if you watched Peter Sellers, The Party, where, you know, uh, Indians were portrayed in such a different light. Really? Or, uh, you know, Appu from The Simpsons with that bumbling kind of accent. Okay. Or even Babu Bhatt from Seinfeld. You know, I love Seinfeld, but there was one character I just, you know, it was they so were more like, cliched or very more. cliched. And even now, like, oh, I think only now, very recently with Irfan Khan, Priyanka, you. Uh, Indians are getting very like sort of meaty roles right. and you're also able to be authentic about your originality, about your roots. That's right. very refreshing. So do you think yeah. it's coming in from talent or is this Hollywood changing its perception about South Asian? I think it's the way the world is changing today. You know, like you look at any big city, whether it's a London or a New York or Berlin or whatever, yeah. there are so many different kinds of people everywhere. Yeah. You know, the way the world looks is different. So naturally, the art form around us will reflect you know what the society is like today yeah so i feel like because the world's becoming such a small place increasingly yeah. um uh, and everybody's everywhere mm. um it's just a recognition of steering away from uh, cliches or caricatures or um, you know what we typically know each other as yeah you know i feel like there is there is an increased um, curiosity among different cultures yeah. to understand each other a little bit better and to just cross over and really look into what uh, how people live now in today's day and age or you know how someone lives in in, in a city um, in India or you know those cliches are I, I feel like I feel like they're disappearing so I feel like more than anything that's what's sort of percolating into work there and uh, naturally you know talent um, we have such a huge database of talent. We are the largest film industry in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about time that more and more of us uh, translate uh, mm -hmm. into areas abroad. Yeah. 
yeah. whether it's European cinema or I mean, it's not like we haven't been doing. We've we've had actors like Om Puri, uh, uh, Sai Jafri. Um, we've had such stalwarts, you know, who've broken through yeah. and done some incredible work. Uh, but I feel like now more and more of that is happening, and more and more of that is happening in a mainstream, bigger way. Okay. You know, yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the examples you've you've laid are you know just just my case in point. But how much of your like army background has got to do with the career choices you're making? You know, because obviously, I think as an army kid, I'm sure you're uh, uh, you're used to you know a sort of certain discipline of working with teams or being a stickler for time. Um, has that also passed over to your career choices? Like you worked with Akshay Kumar, who you said is disturbingly punctual, <laughs> or you know, like the, I'm sure the discipline rigors of American yeah. TV shows. So has that translated into uh, your career choices somewhere? Um, I'm sure it is. I mean, see, I, I I can never go too far from my upbringing. You know, I mean, I've yeah. been brought up a certain way. I've grown up in cantonments. Um, yeah. You know, changing schools every two or three years. Yeah. Uh, changing friends and you know, just identities change. Yeah. I almost had the opportunity to rediscover myself every time I would go to a different school or, um, you know, make new friends or whatever. Yeah. So I think a bit of that is, or a large reason why I I feel comfortable being an actor is because I'm always shifting identities. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm never quite settled, as they say. You know, you're never, never really in one place for too long. Um, I've spent half of this year in Vancouver yeah. filming something, you know, that just happened like literally within a matter of days. Yeah. Your life is constantly uh, on the move. Yeah. So I feel like I'm, I've grown up that way and yeah. my uh, life by default has turned out this way even now, yeah. uh, which is great. I love it. Um, yeah. I wouldn't exchange this for anything in the world. Yeah. Um, as far as discipline's concerned, yes, I, I love you know, people when everything's on time and I, I'm a little bit of a stickler for time. I, I get <laughs> minutes make a difference to my, my day. I, I think that life and the world is, is a much better place and everything's on time. <laughs> so I'm a little bit of a nut job like that. But um, that's why it was such a deep pleasure working with Akshay because yeah. seven o'clock meant quarter to seven. And I was like, okay, so here we're, we're raising the bar. We're, the game's on, you know, something else is going on here. I had a great time working with him. Okay, just I'm sure, reasons. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, we've got Indian television. <laughs> Have you ever considered like working for them? Because it'll be quite a contrast, I imagine. I don't know. I've never been approached, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, playing any any such parts. I, I don't know if I would be able to relate to stuff like this. I haven't yeah. been exposed to things like these. Um, I don't watch television to start with. Yeah. Um, I I feel like uh, on Indian television, if I do work on something, it would um, it would more likely be something non-fiction, okay. um, um, if at all. Yeah. Uh, having said that, I mean, there's nothing really on the anvil or even remotely close to, you know, uh, my horizon, you know, where, where I'm looking at doing something. Yeah. And then I wanted to ask you uh, a slightly personal question about how you started acting because like I'm a writer and I find like um, writing is almost a way for me for this sort of to deal with a wound that doesn't heal. And I like to describe it that way. Now, you know, you also you lost your father at a very young age. And then I read a few of your interviews where you said that uh, when you are on stage or when you're acting, you're almost like, you know, experiencing a sort of happiness uh, that uh, you like uh, uh, getting that sort of attention. Do you think that acting is a way perhaps for you to deal with the wound that doesn't heal? Is it a way to grieve maybe? I don't Not know. really actually. I'm, I, I think that acting has always been a part of my, my personality, yeah. you know, uh, regardless of what happened in my life or, you know, when it happened. I was always... Um, an exhibitionist. I think it started there. I really loved reactions from people. I've always been on the stage. Yeah. Um, I've always loved being on stage, whether it's in school or college, or I've just had a blast always, you know. Yeah. Um, I knew that in, I, I loved interacting with people. Yeah. So uh, I just couldn't put a finger on it, you know, because when you're growing up, you want to be everything from an astronaut to an army officer to like, you <laughs> know, to, an, to a scientist to like, I wanted to be 10,000 things. Like I did not even know what the hell was going on. Yeah. I changed my subjects three times. Yeah. So um, in my school I had um, science with economics. Before that I had science with biology. And then in school, in college I took up commerce. You know, I was like, I was all over the place. Yeah. So I figured that because I'm so confused about what I want to do, yeah. um, I 
there is the one thing that you know I'm sure of that I love doing. I've always continued to do, and which is performing. Okay. Yeah. So I loved being uh, on the stage. So yeah. I, I think more than anything else, it's it's a way of of being in touch with people, of yeah. for, for me to meet people, yeah. just just new energies, you know. That's true. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I think I think that's what my core is really. You know, I really enjoy. Uh, interacting with people and I've enjoyed all sorts of all different kinds of mediums of acting just okay. for that reason whether it's advertising or theater or yeah. film yeah. now uh, or TV series I mean you're just always um, around people and just just new energies That's and true. what it brings out of you absolutely mm -hmm. I'm sure but you know sometimes I think you have to take a long journey to come back to your roots so yeah. have you considered going back to theater because that's where you started your career I'd be very fortunate to be able to do that I think right now time and life is just not in my favor uh, the stars are underlined you know for me to be able to take up theater right now it is just how it is um, uh, but it's a matter of time I'm, I know I will uh, pick something up soon fantastic my last question to you uh, would you call yourself a feminist <laughs> You know, um, I, I don't know if I understand the definition of being a feminist um, uh, completely. So okay. just uh, pardon me there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do feel that women uh, largely need to understand the importance of being self-reliant and educating themselves and being able to live a life they want to live. Um, just just ignoring the fact that you know they're born a woman I feel like many people in in our country you know many women in our country are uh, somewhere trained or sort of you know uh, inspired by by just the family setups around them yeah. to live their life like a woman whatever yeah. that means yeah you know which means that okay you go to college at the most all right you'll do your post graduation but you have to settle down, yeah. have your kids, have your family, all of that, and that is your goal. Exactly. I'm not saying that you know this is something that uh, one should go away from, mm. because the idea of a modern woman isn't not to have a family. I think the idea of uh, a well-balanced life is to have a sense of self-worth and a sense of just an identity, whatever it is, you know, whatever you derive it from, yeah. um, just that purpose you know what are you born for yeah. what is it that you have been sent here for right. I think that is a question that women often miss mm -hmm. you know because they feel like their sole purpose is to reproduce and to yeah. take care and nurture but that comes naturally to us you know we're born this way we are we are the reason that families are together yeah. and you know families exist so what else I think that's a question that you know women must ask themselves and and just be passionate about whatever you you want to pursue yeah. yeah and I think education is something that I feel like is absolutely Very important. absolutely indispensable yeah. has to reach every single girl everywhere yeah. anywhere and everywhere absolutely. and that's where it starts and ends to me yeah. yeah and I hope we see the more of that right yeah really I hope so <laughs> absolutely so it's time for my pop quiz now it's a very short round you know I think okay. like <laughs> yes or no <laughs> answers right. or just like a sentence or whatever you're comfortable with so yeah let's get into it so now you've portrayed a bored ho housewife and a villainous spy mm. what was more fun portrayed the spy the spy any day <laughs> <laughs> it was sure. so evil and it's <laughs> so empowering to be evil and so vicious <laughs> any Bollywood godfather Godfather? Hmm. No. no right? I would love to have a godfather in real life as well. <laughs> I, do. I mean, like, not just my professional life, no. Yeah. Uh, okay. What did you mo miss most about India when you were in the US and in Canada? The you warmth know? of the people. I really miss the warmth of the people abroad because I feel like culturally we're so warm and so... Um, we look out for each other, you know, and it, it, it happens on a daily basis at, the, at any level in, this, in the society. Uh, the know. worst part about being in Bollywood? Worst part, hmm. I can't think of a bad part of being in, in this industry at all because it's really a dream that I, I feel like has been fulfilled in every way for me. Was there anything I, that you'd call as the worst part of being in Hollywood, for instance? Absolutely not. That's, uh, no, I mean, it's just an extension of my work. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's where life has taken me in, you know, in that direction and uh, it's just amazing and yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is, there any, is there a worst part about being an actor? 
the worst part about being an actor again i, I can't <laughs> i'm really trying very hard to you know come up with something yeah. i think there are some things that um but you know again i i really i really can't think of anything that makes yeah. my life difficult being an actor because everything is so entertaining and so much fun for me all all the time i'm always entertained <laughs> By the way, I had to ask you this also. Uh, so, did you find Americans hotter? Did you find Indian guys hotter? Tricky question. <laughs> um, I think Indian men are very charming. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm. I I'm a little bit. Uh, yeah. I mean, not to say American men aren't, yeah. but I luck. I I quite love the 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 rustic sort of. Um, charm that Indian men carry, and I think it's it's very endearing. They're they're more they're warmer. You know, yeah. so is yeah. love on the cards at all? Love is always on the cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what hand to deal right now. It's just that love is always on the cards. Yeah. And marriage on the cards at all? I hope so. I don't know. Time will tell. Okay. I don't know. It's not a plan again. I mean, yeah. it's it's about you know that happening. I yeah. feel like those are all matters of providence and you know the right Literally. time, the right place. Absolutely. And right. if you had to go back and live your life, uh, would you do things exactly the same way? Mostly, <laughs> there, there are a couple of things that changed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just because you know there, there there are some things I I could have done better, yeah. but uh, mostly yeah, I wouldn't change a thing really. Yeah. And is your life journey turning out to be anything that you expected? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've stopped making plans. I've stopped, uh, you know, deciding that I'm definitely going to do this and I'm surely going to be you know finding myself here. After so and so time, forget it. <laughs> I live day by day. Um, you know, I I had no idea I was going to be out of the country for four or five months. Yeah. Uh, you know, when the year began, so I don't know what's coming next. I don't make plans anymore. That's yeah. great. <laughs> okay, Nimra, thank you so much for joining us. It was thank really you. lovely speaking to thank you. Thank you. It was and a pleasure. And I wish you all the best in all your endeavors. You're doing us so proud, and I'm sure you'll continue to do so. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Pleasure.